Hello and welcome to Moving Pictures Kenya. Today we are heading to the DMV for the Aveingo Cultural Day. Kwa kwa majina naitwa Chris Achai. Nimetoka kule Virginia. Mimi ni msusi. Hapa nimekuja function ya swallowship ya Waluya. Kwa wale walikosa leo, next time sipitwe na mkuja na chiswa. Other than attending the cultural day, we want to know why Kenyans in the DMV area are hiring. Niko Richmond, Virginia na kazi ambayo tunafanya ni ya home care agency. Agency yetu inaitwa Graceful Hearts Home Care Services. Na sasa hivi tunaajiri wale watu ambao wana hitaji kazi kazi ya home care. Hiyo ni kusaidia wale wazee, kusaidia wale watu ambao hawajiwezi, wagonjwa ambao hawajiwezi na Tuna ham sana kusaidia wa Kenya wetu na watu kutoka East Africa. Tuna ham sana ya kuwasaidia kwa sababu hao tuko nao. Na kama kuna mtu yote ambaye ana itaji pata kazi akiwa marekani kwa sababu hatu wajiri watu kutoka nje bado watuja fikia yo level ya kuajiri kuita watu kuja kufanya kazi hapa marekani kutia kwa agency yetu. Lakini akiwa mtu ambaye ako willing, ako hapa marekani tayari na hana kazi na nataka mahali pa kuanzia maisha. Anaeza kututafuta na tukaeze kumsaidia. But I would love the day I get a sister or a brother from my community where we are speaking the same language and we understand why we are in America and the challenges that we face because the people I've employed are not our people. Amidst heavy traffic, I drove from my base in Pennsylvania through the DMV into Arlington in Virginia. DMV is informally used to refer to the metropolitan area of Washington DC, Maryland and Virginia. Uh, kwa majina naitwa Winnie, nimetoka Alexandria. Uh, nafanya clinical technician job in over hospital na kule Kenya nimetoka mahali kunaitwa Webuye I'm happy to be here I've really enjoyed myself Hallelujah Amen. Hallelujah Amen. it is not only enjoying here but we shall enjoy in heaven. in heaven all of us together Under the summer sun the Aveingo cultural day unfolded with promises of celebration and unity Members of the Kenyan community from across the DMV area and beyond gathered to honor their heritage and connect with one another. As the event kicked off, traditional Kenyan melodies danced in the air, welcoming guests and setting the stage for what was bound to be a day full of joy and reflection. There was a lot of traditional Kenyan food including Yamachoma, Ugali, Sukumawiki, Murenda, Tsesaka, Libokoi, Mandazi, Chapati and Mushenye. Leo kumekuwa na pati ya waluya, tumekula vitu mingi, tumekula kuku, nyama, murenda and all those things that we eat at home. So nimefraia sana next time purpose to come. The aroma of Yamachoma filled the air in the DMV area, inviting everyone to indulge in the flavors of home. You see, me and Viva, we met in such a situation. Oh, okay. And there used to be something called Andemi. And Andemi used to go around states. And that's how we met some years back. Special guests, Viva Itamere and Alex Inyagwa, representing the larger Aveingo group, came all the way from Boston and shared inspiring words about the importance of community and the values they hold dearly. We have a group called Abeingo Boston. That's the overall general group. And Abeingo Boston has several chapters. We do several different things. We have a benevolent fund, which is called Abeingo Boston Benevolent Fund. A few of you here are members of that benevolent fund. And uh, we've been able to minister and help um, many families in this area through that benevolent fund. 
We also have an organization called WEMA. WEMA, we are building apartments in Kisumu. This is a gated community, uh, high-end apartments in Kisumu. We have some two-bedroom units available if you're interested, 8.4 million Kenya shillings. Another thing we are doing is we have an event coming up in August. On August 24th, 2024, in Boston, Massachusetts, it is, uh, we call it, it's, uh, it's New Year Day, but it is a, a festival, it's a day like this where people gather together. This year is only a dinner dance, it will be in a hall, and very fancy, wonderful uh, event where you can dress up, come in, and we network with one another, connect with one another, and uh, just get to build our, our connections in the community. Because one thing we've, real, we've noticed, unity is strength. That is what builds the community. And how do you unify with people? You find a common goal. So your common goal could be church, your common goal could be language, your common goal could be pick a thing, one thing, right? So for us, our starting point is our community, which is Luya, but we also know we are Kenyans. So on, in that regard, we also extend to our Kenyan community and we expand because when we are united, we can do more things, we can be resilient, we can support one another and we can uh, help each other grow or even just be able to know about what's happening around us and among us. They spoke of unity, prosperity and the significance of belonging to a community in a foreign land. You can move so far and you can improve the lives of the minority or minority on ground. As here in Virginia, we have been encouraging people to come together, to work together, have that unity. Remember, we are way far away from home in a home. So I encourage you, who, those who are listening to me, and where you are, whether you are in Kenya, whether you are here in America, whether you are everywhere, please unite. Let us stop gossiping. Let us stop talking petty things, but work together to make sure that as a community we can rise. The day took an unexpected turn when members who are successful business owners took to the stage to share their stories. The successful entrepreneurs illuminated the room with tales of perseverance, hard work, and the rewards of entrepreneurship within the Aweyingo community. I felt like uh, the best way would be to invite some other people who have made it in this uh, country in small businesses so that they can come and share their ideas and also encourage another Kenyan who is here that actually in this country, United States, it's possible to make it in life. Who wanna say kidogo kidogo? Jaza kibaba. Mimi nilianza kazi kama caregiver. Na hii kazi ambayo wengi waneza darao. Hiyo pesa tulikuwa tunalipa kwanza nilianza na dola tisa unusu. Nikapandishwa nikapanza kupata dola kumi. E, nilivumilia nikafanya hiyo kazi ilikuwa ngumu ndiyo. Lakini kidogo kidogo hujaza kibaba. This is a testimony. I want to encourage all of you. Usije ukajidharau. Usingoje utapata vingi ndio ufanye nini? Ndio ufanye kitu kikubwa. Hiyo kidogo yenye unapata. I always encourage everyone. Hiyo kidogo yenye unapata. Vile wao tunapanguza hao wazee. Hiyo pesa kidogo. It can move mountains. Kwa hiyo kidogo kidogo hivyo na kuweka pesa kidogo kando na save kidogo kidogo hivyo kama mchezo na tuka ongea na rafiki yangu tukasema kwamba tunaanzisha tunataka kuweka bicho zetu pamoja tuanzishe hii biashara ya kuajiri sasa so kwa hiyo industry hatukuwa hatukuwa na pesa ya kwamba yafatwe na big fat account ya dola ndio tufanye nini tuendelee na hiyo biashara but tulianza mimi nikiwa caregiver yeye akiwa caregiver 
tukapata wateja, hatukuajiri watu kwanza. Tukao tuna, unaenda kwa huyu mteja, unaenda kwa huyu, unamtengeneza, unamclean, unampatia chakula, unamtoa kwa kitanda kama ni wakutoa kwa kitanda, unaenda unamwacha kama ako pale, unaenda kwa mwingine the same same thing, unamwacha, unaenda kwa, un, unarudi kwa huyo mwenye ulitoka kwanza, unamweka kwa kitanda, unarudi kwa huyu mwingine tena, unamweka kwa kitanda, yani unawatengenezea chakula. Una... And it was very tiresome. I used to wake up at at uh, around 5 kwa sababu 6 yafanya huwa nimetoka kwa nyumba. Sometimes I used to take bus. Na kurudi ni kurudi kurudi kwa nyumba ilikuwa saa 5 usiku. Wakati ambapo tunataka biashara ifanye nini? Ishike. Tulivumilia hivyo na tukaendelea hivyo na at the end right now I can comfortably sit in the house or go to work if I want. Naenda kazi nikitaka. Kama sitaki naka. Kuna watu kwa ofisi wafanye kazi. My dear friends, usi usidharau ile pesa kidogo. Let me enjoy. God bless us all. So I started a very, I'm employed, but I started a very small business about three and a half years ago. Uh, you know, I was sitting around and saying, you know, retirement will come one day. You know, what will happen? You know, when the job ends and these mortgages still need to be paid and the children still need, you see, I have uh, relatively young children, you know. So I was just thinking ahead. And I said, let me start it when I'm very secure in business. I have more than 20 something years of working in corporate Kenya and corporate America. So my story is slightly different because I came to America about just 10 years ago, but I transferred with my job. So you know that security, you know, you come with paperwork, you, you know, so it was a little more secure. But that made me so comfortable. That is the thing. It made me so comfortable that when I was going through some life changes, I sat back and I said, you know, you need to look ahead because things happen, right? You just need to begin to think, what will my future work look like? You know, I'm not getting younger and I was in a very terminal technology field. So young people like my son are coming in every day. They're sharper, they're smarter. You know, it's very easy for an employer to say, we like you, but you know, we want somebody who is more flexible. So I was looking ahead, but there were also certain things that I was also going through. And so I started a cleaning business, residential and commercial cleaning business. And I started it and said, let me put in some of the money I'm getting, bonus, those small, small monies. And from the boot of my car, my, the trunk of my car, I started the business. I just said, let me start. What I, what I know is to clean. People will come, you know, and I thought the startup costs were relatively, you know, low. And just people around us, you know, people just around us. And I also started doing a bit of marketing because I used some of the skills I'd acquired. And so it was actually a little rapid for, because a lot of people want houses cleaned. So, you know, it was just about what price. So, of course, una finya, finya, finya price kabza. So that you get people and you get, you test, yeah. you test things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it looked promising. It looked, and I got clients from, you know, there were not only people like us. There were people, everybody just wanting to clean. So that went well for about six months and then I started thinking, okay, maybe I get one or two other people. And you know, I'm still looking for our people to work for me because I'm getting other people, other colors of people, you know, the Hispanics especially, they're very, very quick yeah. to come. And that is what they know to clean. Yes. So I did that over a year. I did not make any money, but I did not lose money. So that is a good thing in the first year. Yes. You, don't, you don't lose money, but you're also not making a profit. Yeah. But you see, the good thing is I had a job. So that is not the only thing. So when we see Kujioni, you know, I'm multitasking, right? Nangalia kazi, isiaribike. And on the other side, I'm also thinking of this, uh, whatever. And I named it after my two children. One of my sons is Joseph, the other one is Declan. So it's called Jodeci Cleaners. Jodeci, right? My two children. They are my inspiration for starting this business. And so the second year, obviously, I started seeing a lot more competition because this one now increased a bit of my prices. So I started thinking, maybe let me do commercial. And so about October last year, I said, I'm now going to look for churches, daycares, 
uh, gyms, you know, those small spaces. Because that one is a contract. That one is guaranteed. Because somebody cleaning your house, it just depends. A pesa, great. He wants you to come. When they're not interested, they're not interested. You cannot get that business. <coughs> but it's also very, very picky. Unapata mwingine, apendi hii, anataka hii, ataki kulipa, analipa kesho, whatever, but my experience. So we have a lot of skills. Think about some of the skills you've gathered that you're not even applying in your job today. That you're not even applying and maybe you want to apply those skills. So my background has always been very technology, but the other things I was also interested in. Oh, so many other things. So I'm getting an opportunity to balance. I'm doing my IT work, but I'm also applying some of the things that I like and I know. So I'm very good with customer service. I'm very good with marketing. I'm very, I, know I don't do that in my job. But this other thing gives me that balance. But also a form of financial security. So I started commercial and it has been the best decision I made. Wow. The best decision I made. I have two daycares. I have one church. I have three uh, gyms. I, I mean in the span of six, eight months. And it's because of referral. Word of mouth. Yeah. Word of mouth, they start saying, oh, we have another branch in Stafford. We have another branch in Arlington. You know, like that. It's just referral. Mm -hmm. You get a contract. So the money is still not there. It's not as profitable. Why? Because I'm also not there 100%. But I would love the day I get a sister or a brother from my community where we're speaking the same language and we understand why we're in America and the challenges that we face because the people I've employed are not our people. I've just not found somebody like us who is also motivated, who is interested, who wants to learn. So we'll tell you, we want to teach people. We want people like us, next to us. Come as I am going to Kenya for two and a half weeks. I want to leave somebody I can trust. But you know, see you're dealing with people who you have just, it is just a business transaction. Yeah. But it would be nice for us to say, out of this business Mike is having and somebody else is running, come sit next to me, let me tell you how I started. How did I get the company formed? How am I making sure my books are in order? IRS, whatever. We can show you these things. We can. We want to build a community of business people where we refer business to each other. Yeah. So, Mimi, why can't I do business in Clarksburg? Mm -hmm. I know a Kenyan here, maybe in Clarksburg. I don't have cleaners there, but I can visit my sister. Mm -hmm. My sister can tell me, let's get somebody in Clarksburg. I'm in Woodbridge and I can do business in Clarksburg. Mm -hmm. That's why I love the Nyumbakumi idea. Mm -hmm. That we are just expanding ourselves. Whether in career or business or whatever. But I think Mike will tell you, we are looking for our people also. We don't want to leave anybody behind. And we also want to learn. Somebody in, my, in Nyumbakumi the other day was telling us, they are opening the second daycare. Second daycare. I don't know whether people have seen that. Yeah. It's an amazing, beautiful story. I want to now sit with her and say, how are you doing it? It's such a big idea. It is working. She's successful. How can I also learn? But for those of us also who are like me, who is very young in this business, but I think I have one or two ideas and things I want to bring somebody else also in, close to me, to start another type of business. right? And we just support each other. Because it's also very lonely when you're doing business. Yeah. It's also very lonely. Yeah. You sit sometimes, you wonder whether you're on the right track, whether you're getting good advice, whether you're thinking the right things. So we sharpen each other, right? Mm -hmm. Sharpen each other. So I like that Mike is in my group. You see, I'm lucky. We are both in Woodbridge, Nyumbakumi. Wow. He's running a business. I'm also running a business. I can pick up my phone. Mike, how is it going? Mm. How is summer? What are you thinking about mm. business-wise? Mm. Right? So that we also, you know, we are socializing. This is fantastic. But if we can grow each other, you know, financially also, that would be an, a beautiful thing. And that's what we're looking for. And Mike is saying we have jobs we can help in one way or another. Yeah. You know, we're here. We're here to support people who are interested. And we also want your support, your prayers. And let's see how we can also, you know, just be excited about another Kenyan doing something good out there. It is possible. It is possible. We are hustlers. We really are. We come here and we have a lot. We, we, we are very resilient. No, no. We, we've gone through a lot. So you have it in you. That business idea, you know, just try it. You know, try it. Uh, it might just work.
but it's very encouraging. I, I, like I told you, I have not, today was the first day I met Mike. Mm. But we have been talking and encouraging each other. You know, and now I'm here to support him and I'm excited that he has this whole community behind him. Caroline, Caroline Nanga. <laughs> okay, my name is Kikuyo. Uh, I'm a nurse. My background, I'm a nurse. But I um, know so many Nigerians and people from West Africa, they don't work for that long. They work and then they start their own business. Yes. And so I'm a type of a Kikuyu that I also don't like for working for someone. And I thought of what I can do using my background because there's a saying that says that you can use your passion to, um, what does it say? Your passion is your, your passion, um, from your passion you can create um, you, something, something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot, but my passion in nursing, my passion to help people, I decided to use it to, uh, to build a business and I opened a school. Um, I have CNAs, so my school teaches CNAs, and now we have a program. I have a program where I have um, I have contracts with different facilities that the CNAs can come for free. So if you have anybody that is coming in the country, they can come to school for free, and then they can work for these companies. I also have contract uh, with the, with the state, um, and they can also get um, scholarships. So if you know anyone. Um, So if you know anyone that is new to the country and they're looking for a way to start in and to begin, they can come to my school and start a CNA. It's a, it's a good background. They come for free and then they have a job. And I'm also doing something else. I am in financial industry now. I'm teaching people how to um, invest for their future <coughs> and for emergency purposes. So if you know someone that is looking for passive income, I'll also help you and walk you through the process. Thank you. Um. I was introduced to school, CNA school. I went to CNA school. I did not start right away after the CNA, after I completed my CNA, but later on, I lost my job and I did not have any way to find a job because there was nobody to walk me through. So the only thing that I, I was left with was that CNA thing. So I, I kept on walking around with that CNA until I found my first CNA job in an agency. So I worked for agencies after agencies, agency after agency. Later on, in uh, 2020, one of uh, major agencies here in Virginia, the owner decided to invite me for a cup of coffee. And uh, when we sat down, she told me she admired my personality. And for that reason, she want me to join her in the administration so that I can start working from the office. She taught me all administrative work. So she trained me. I went through the training and she was very patient with me. Sometimes I got so pissed off, so tired because this is too much. Too much of thinking, too much of, and you know the company is huge because he, she, she has clients like all over the place. And I am there to schedule them, to staff them, and at the same time do some HR jobs. So it was not easy for me. After, one, after about one and a half years, I decided to quit because of the pressure. It was too much for me to handle, okay? But I did, I did not quit to go and do something else. I went ahead and started looking for the same CNA jobs. Now, the company that I applied for, they asked me for the resume and I sent the resume to them and they said, oh, so you can do scheduling? I said, yes, oh, we did one. So I continued with the same thing. Now, that company was a white man's company and now they started even helping me understand more detailed stuff about this business and the frustrations of being uh, micromanaged by a boss working in the same office with the boss was always just getting completely uh, I was getting so worn out with this kind of thing so I was like uh, I think I need to start thinking to the direction of becoming my my own boss. 
my own boss. And immediately, I decided last year, it was too much. I put in my resignation in February, and I told this guy, I don't need your job. So he asked me, okay, because we don't have anyone here to work for us, can you hold a little bit as we try to find somebody? And I said, okay, but on my terms. So I gave them my terms. I'll work from home and just two days in the office. So they agreed. So uh, I said, I, 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 I did not stop thinking about having my own company. The reason why I wanted to work from home, I wanted now to focus on building my own company. So I started, created the company from by myself and just building the, pro the, 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 the policies and procedures. I came up with the policies and procedures and everything and I passed the survey once. When they came in, they said, oh man, who did this for you? I said, I did it myself. And they were like, how did you do it? I said, because I've been doing this for long and I have to understand how it is. And they were like, oh my God, this is wonderful. Immediately they approved me for the license. Viva and Alex talked about the upcoming Luhia Festival to be held in Boston in August. They also talked about exciting investment opportunities, including the 1 billion shilling housing project in Riyadh on the outskirts of Kisumu back home in Kenya, sparking the attendees' imagination and fueling dreams of growth and prosperity. We came together and we put up a group and we have just managed to put up high rises in Riyadh, in Kisumu, which is costing us almost a billion. As the sun began to set on the Aweingo Cultural Day in Arlington, there was a palpable sense of inspiration and anticipation among the guests. The echoes of laughter, music, and shared stories lingered in the warm evening breeze, leaving everlasting impression on everyone present. It was a wonderful event. We have met many Kenyans who are doing various different business activities here in this area, which was a really big surprise for me because, you know, not many Luyas are known for having uh, businesses. We have met folks who, uh, one person owns a CNA school where she teaches people to become CNAs and get certified to get a job. We have met um, a lady who owns a home health agency organization where she hires people uh, to be able to do the home health jobs. We've also met someone else who uh, teaches people about financial literacy. And then we've also met someone who owns a cleaning service. And the cleaning service evolved from just being residential in the beginning, and now she's doing commercial cleaning uh, at daycare, she's doing a cleaning at uh, uh, schools and other commercial areas. This has been a very inspiring event here today, and I'm very energized and happy to see what is happening in our community. And as they dispersed, already looking forward to the next gathering in 2025, they carried with them not just memories of a special day, but a renewed sense of pride in their roots and the strength of their community. It's been a, a, a blessing. It was a good, 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 good uh, get together. Kenyans who are in the Northern Virginia area are getting to know one another, socialize, fellowship, uh, sharing ideas with one another, expanding your network because your network the time is your net worth. So uh, it was a good source of information. I've learned a lot from others. Um, you know, shared information of how getting together makes us a much better union. So I, I hope and I pray we continue to have more of these meetings in the future. I look forward to the Luya night in uh, Boston in uh, August. Hi, my name is Janet Muzango. Uh, I had a great opportunity um, convening here with uh, my fellow lawyers and other tribes and it was a success. Uh, I had a great time. 
uh, we touched on uh, several issues about uh, elevating lawyers and uh, trying to erase this uh, uh, lawyer um, el el elusiveness. Thank you for watching this story. If you are new to the platform, please like and share this story and consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Bonventure and this is Moving Pictures Kenya, connecting people, inspiring Africa.